Hey everybody, I'm Yendi and this is Odyssey with Yendi, Untold Journeys, where I speak with some of my favorite people and have some shape-shifting conversations. Here, they share their stories leaving nuggets of goodness and life lessons to motivate and inspire our own life's journeys. Odyssey with Yendi Untold Journeys is brought to you in partnership with Sagicor. Buying a home? Score big with a Sagicor Bank Mortgage. It's easy. Find your property, apply for your Sagicor Bank Mortgage, get your keys in no time, and you're home! MasterCard. Make online purchases in a safe way with Debit MasterCard. Let the passion of football find you everywhere. MasterCard. Start something priceless. Grab yourself some Appleton and tap into a new world of flavor. Have a snack for this episode? Well, grab your Sun Mix and taste the good life. For many of you, he's the Meet the Mitchells patriarch. But for many of us, he gave us a soundtrack for the best days of our lives. Choo-choo-choo-choo. It's not a train, it's Wayne, Wayne Marshall. Wayne Marchese. What's up? <laughs> I am so glad to have you. I Thank feel like you. I've had the members of the family, yeah. but I have not had my original foundation friend, exactly. member of the I family. I was wondering, I was wondering what's going on because they don't, Tammy was the first. Tammy was my very first guest. She was my pilot episode. Wow, that's awesome. And she came through for me because, yeah. you know, they spring it on her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She was telling me the backstory. <laughs> Yo, but she's the realest. You oh, guys yes, are man. the realest. You yeah. guys are so special. Yeah. Um, but I'm really proud of you. Not yeah. meet the Mitchells, Wayne. Not yeah. Wayne Marshall, Wayne. I'm proud of you. I'm mm. proud of you because, you know, as we we're reasoning before, Mm. I am thinking of Wayne that I know from youth days. Days, youth days in your uniform. Yeah. You remember you used to try and learn to cane row in your hair? You remember that? There you have it. Because so, <laughs> you're my brother match. Pari. Do the match. Do I the mean, match people. And I'm really yeah. proud of you. I'm proud yeah. of just, I feel like you've lived 500 lives and I've been able to be witness to all of them. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, I think everyone knows that you're just a solid person. And I have to say, I'm very proud of you as well. No, sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Watching you evolve from a young girl yeah. to where you are now, to developing this platform, Miss Jamaica, Miss World, all of your exploits, you know, very proud of you, how you've Thank represented you. yourself and Thank your family. You. Yeah. Thank awesome. you, Wayne. <laughs> we are come from far, people. We are come from we far. Have had that we had to have I that know, moment. it's like, uh... <laughs> Um, but let us talk a bit about what I am now. So it's so strange to me that people know you as Wayne on TikTok. Me, yeah. the Mitchells Wayne. Yeah. Wayne as the meme. When I'm like, no, but the man have catalog. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What to know? Yeah. What to know about? <laughs> Can we please talk about Bandana Platz Wayne? Yeah, I'm, that is the original. <laughs> yeah. Um, coming out of high school, entering into the music, really loving the music. I think my first... Um, journey, the journey began when I moved from Barbican to Hope Pastures and yeah. I moved a few gates down from King Jammies. Yeah. So I started to hang out with King Jammies, son them and, and what have you. Eventually we went down to the studio and then when I went to the studio and I was just like, wow. And I fell in love with the, the vibes, mm. the energy of the place. You know, just seeing all of these great artists. At, at, at this time, King Jammies is like leading mm -hmm. dancehall and reggae music. Yeah. So there would be like the hub for most uh, prominent Jamaican artists. Yeah. So that's where I went now and I, I first was introduced to Bounty Killer there. Not like verbally or physically introduced, but I would see him from a distance. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I can even remember when Trev came home and said, yo, Marshy. My father find the wickedest artist. Him named Bunty. I think it's Bunty Hunt time this year at the time. That was like the very first time when, when Killer come out to see you and yeah, start yeah. go studio to studio. I'm saying, hey, let me hear where I'm going with no one. I remember him bring home, bring home a cassette and I was just like, yo, from a year, Killer, I said, all right, it's a rap. The Lock. game changed, right? Mm -hmm. So the artist are going to bust up the place. And then, like, you know, it's almost like, you're there from the inception to the 
first when him sang them go out there till till the impact when him start make till him start get a notoriety around Jamaica and then yeah. you realize saying it's the biggest thing. So you feel like you're a part of the whole process, yes. you know, mm -hmm. because you were there from the beginning and, you know, started to really look up to Bounty. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I would see him rehearsing and kind of just be there, just like a fly on the wall, you know, and not knowing that I would be a confidant, a friend, a comrade, of this same iconic yes. artist who I looked on as like a, some superhuman. Right. Because Killer was like the perfect package mm -hmm. right out of the gate, right out of CV. Him know about how to put himself together. Mm -hmm. Him know how to deliver. And him, him raw. Him, him raw, mm -hmm. the super talented. Him know him have the rhyme them. He, him start to bring a prestige to the game where he, even him price them. Yeah, yeah. The business start to gain after what Killer was charging because Killer would have said, yo, you want that tune there? X amount of money. Yeah, and yeah, some yeah. man have come from all over because it's just the biggest tune. Mm -hmm. So it's the value and he start put a value to the music and I realize, wow, the way this man I do the thing is like, it's a whole business. Yes. You know, I, I can see where you can earn from this thing and eventually we started Diving into the writing aspects, you know, a friend of me used to say, yo, blow your body in a dog. No, but that is something about you that a lot of people don't realize. But yeah. if you pay more than five minutes of attention to Wayne, you realize he's a wordsmith. Yeah, you yeah. are the one, you find a rhyme for everything. Yeah. Not no slip you. Yeah, you yeah. take time talk because, you I know? love it. I yeah. love it. I love, um, I love language. I yes. love rhymes. I love poems. I love saints. I love the, the, the modern spin on it. I love the, the authentic Miss Lou vibration, them times. Eh? Yeah. I'm a student of it, you know, yes. and, and I, I, I did well in, in English language and English literature. It's very obvious. In my exams, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I did love it. And yes. then when we started be, um, rubbing shoulders with, like, you know, say, Sasko mm -hmm. and, and Vibes Cartel, we all share the same type of passion. Yes for the words and putting things together and rhyming and and even before that Conley from War 21 yes. was like I used to see his the way how he put things together I was like w w this is like some way out super talent you know yeah, yeah. And, I, and I used to always it's like iron sharp iron you know so from where mm. part sometimes we'd have those trips that would go on me and cartel and assassin and it's just rhyme so you have anything where you want to say because you can't just rhyme for rhyme's sake you have to rhyme in context to what you want to say. So them little thing there was just like the ultimate training academy, you know? Oh my And Killer did have the whole hour around him as the, the young gun as them, you know? <laughs> I can't even imagine, by the way, that is where I don't want to be a fly on the wall. Yeah, like man. in that school, in that generation, in that era. Because yeah. for me, you know, that is when dancehall was dancehall. That's for me. Yeah. So dancehall for me is not super cat and Shabba. Yeah. That was when I was a child. But when yeah. I'm coming into my own now, yeah, 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 I yeah. was definitely right killer of course, beanie of course. cartel yeah. alliance yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah man <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't get me started the school the man <laughs> when um when did you realize that it's something that you could have taken seriously like this artist thing is actually something that could be a real full-blown career for you um it, it was really when my, my peers would say yo bro your body not like yeah real body not like i, I see you I do the thing in a real life, you know, and then um, King Jammy's son, so Trev, Jam two were my biggest supporters. Mm -hmm. um, Jan Jan was older than us, but still would be like, you know, give it a thumbs up when we're doing the right thing or whatever. But definitely Jam two and Trev was was my little, um, you know, in, you know, what, what do I call it now? My representation in the studio aspect right. of it to say, yo, he my real talent because even King, King did just have me as Their the friend. you down the road mm -hmm. that come to the studio at, at, at daytime. Mm -hmm. He never really understand that it was a fire or even that maybe my parents would have allow me right. outside of the confines of my safe middle class home that part. to go to dance. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's something that I always would express to them when I was getting older, when I was about to leave high school, I would be like, yo, I really want to take this thing serious, you know. But of course, parents want to play it safe. They want it to be a lawyer, a doctor. You know, they don't want it to go off and be this random creative in a space where it's hardcore, build it. You yes. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. my little son, I got going at this now. You know, so I really had to 
make it known in no um, unfamiliar terms to them that this was actually a passion of mine. Yeah. So it wasn't until um, a bad accident, a bad car accident, where my friend Nicholas Lulim mm. passed away in that accident, right? And it wasn't until then in the church when I sang, I wrote, I rewrote a Lauryn Hill song, Zion, mm. um, kind of dedicating it to, to Nicholas and his life and, and the relationship that we had and stuff. And when I sang it in the church, I went home the day and my father said to me, something happened in the church today and I am now convinced that you need to go and make some money in music. And my father is not a man with heart enough, you know. So him saying that was by far the most impacting, the most, um, the biggest push that I've ever gotten, the most fire that has ever been like put. Lit under you. Lit under mm -hmm. me, right? So right then and there, you know, I was just like, all right, I don't need to hear nothing else because if daddy is with it, then mm -hmm. mommy have to go. She will come along, come around, come mm -hmm. around. you know. So right then and there, you know, I must start fire away. I start right, I start put myself in a situation where I would be rubbing shoulders and interacting with musicians, with producers. I remember in Sixth Farm, my brother and Jesse say, yo, I could go to Mikey Bennett. Mm -hmm. And them time, they think I'm bad and ready for busting them. I say, all right, <laughs> I go to Mikey Bennett and Mikey Bennett, I go push me and I go run the place. When we got to Mikey Bennett, you now I remember in you know, my six farms uniform, you know, I got to Mikey Bennett. So Mikey Bennett was in the middle of a studio session. So my daddy you know and I have my tune them well sort out, ready for sing now for Mikey Bennett, you know. Mikey Bennett hit me with a thing called press play upon the board. So <laughs> something did, a song was playing in the studio. I'm say, sing back that, sing back those three lines where you hear the singer sing. So I say, Warm to my preparation. Right, they say, I'm catch me half guard now. I say, all right. I'm going to try my best to see it. He said, <laughs> say, no, nah, man. You're not ready yet, man. You need to train up, man. You need to go do some vice training and something and come circle back. I said, jeez, i um, peace. I said, after me, at the next Jamaican superstar, I'm ready for bus right now, this minute. The man bust my bubble, the man flap my shoe. <laughs> But, but, but I took his advice. Mm -hmm. I took his foolish advice, right? And I went to go do my vice training. Mm. And my gum, Miss Slifer, this Cuban lady in Jamaica, who, I, I, when I started to go to her, she told me that she did, did vice training for Shaggy. Mm. And, um, and Bounty to Bounty did a couple of classes with her. So you say, oh. So I say, okay, this not right. sound bad. Yeah. To top star that. Mm. So, all right, me, me do my vice training. See, the, the more me I do my vice training, the more I go through that evening time, the engineer, them I say, yo, dog, you know what I say? That's something in your vice. Where you get it from? And me I say, hmm. You know, my mind, I not feeling any growth, you know, because it's such a um, process. But the muscle getting stronger. The muscle I get stronger. Mm -hmm. So people on the outside were able to say, yo, yeah, I get stronger, I get stronger. What you say after that, a beer, mommy, me, mo, mo. Beer, mommy, me, mo, mo, like cow. Mommy, me, me, my try, yeah, man. So we had to do a whole lot of something there, and eventually, you now we, we, we reach to our next level. Mm -hmm. we, we're ready now, you know, and we stay so now and start writing songs you now, Renaissance and the sound system, and Copper Shot and mm -hmm. Nemesis and them sound, they start take notice. I myself had a sound system from when I was in my teens, so me and Trev and some of Jammies you them and I some never of my friends. I realized that. Yeah, man, I, I, that, that was the first time when I used to hear myself over a sound, over I a microphone. I never realized Yeah, we that. did have a sound named Ecstasy Sound. Because we did just love it oh, and we did just right. want to express yourself in the music, whichever oh. way. A lot of artists start the musical journey by being sound in system. In a sound. In a sound. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know, you just know, say, the fire there, it, it, it magnetize you to the music. Yes. So that was one of my first things. So eventually, you now we start. Write the music. So it, as a selector, you study the music. Mm -hmm. You know what moves people. Mm -hmm. So you get a perspective on what type of lyrics yes. people is fond of, what type of beats make you move. And you start to formulate a direction in yes. the music, you know? So I guess I just took that and then started uh, again, you know, just writing every day, working, working. I found this song named When the Smoke Clears and then... When the Smoke Clears... And, and the, the battle, battle has been won. Choo 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 choo. choo, choo. Ah. So it was a song that I wrote 
with killer in mind. Yeah. But, kill, but doing a song with killer was a far fetched dream. Mm -hmm. Or so you thought. Or so I thought. <laughs> so Trev now, who didn't know killer, obviously being King Jammy's son, King Jammy's, um, killer had already moved on from King Jammy's at this time. Right. But it was an amicable thing. So right. we still did, you know, we still had the opportunity to link up killer and whatever. So he introduced us and we sing the song and killer say, hey, it sounds good still, you know. You know, but that's you know, not what he said though. What did he actually say? He said, Watch it, my youth. Oh, you get that song there from it. So good still. I'm mean, not tell you, no, like, so like it can fly. But then, <laughs> he never really give you a time to say, yo, or give us a confirmation. Because, you know, Killer is a man with them days, the Killer hype, you know, mm -hmm. man. Meaning, him does have the ear of mm -hmm. arrogance there. Yeah. Even though it's not really arrogance, it's just so him stay, yeah. so him stay from people who tell us, I saw Rodney stay from him there, see if him have the boss in his the boss. Yeah. <laughs> so, Eventually, you now I was just like, yo, let me sing the song pan a dub play for any songs and just try to get it out there and whatever, whatever. One night we go on a peppers. Millennials will never know what peppers <laughs> By is. By the way, that was, you know where Mega Mart is now? Okay, in between Mega Mart and the uh, shopping center. We right. Peppers. Mm -hmm. So we got peppers now, or any songs I play, I'm gonna do the dub and the shines with him. Doom, doom, psh, go doom, do doom, do doom. Right? And we'll do the dub. When the smoke clears. And when Renaissance, when Jazzy T and Dylan drop the thing in the dance, you know, the place, mash up, you know. Boom! Be a thing, big forward. And Killer was in at the party. Ah. So right there, so was the mystical moment where we didn't need for Killer realize that power's day in mm -hmm. it. A vibe's in it. Mm -hmm. So when we go so boom now, and say Killer, but Killer say, yo, yeah. now when the smoke clear something there, I'm mad sitting, you know. <laughs> and if they give me a different vibe, boom, you know. <laughs> The, the, the rest is history, you know, him, him, him come check her on a jammy studio one night. And of course, this is like the ultimate dream for me, you oh, know. Remember, I said course. Killer was like the first inspiration That's right. to make me want for the dance or music. In and the here, first place. Here comes, we are linked with him now on such a different level now, musically. And then now we do the song, the song, go, go hard, you know, and then Killer carry me out on tour, my first professional tour is killer carry me and show me the road and show me the ropes and after that now me and killer was just like bonafide proper bonafide yeah, virgin yeah, proper man. bonafide virgin then eventually you have cartel who come in at the free now we say oh we need to formalize this thing now alliance you know mm -hmm. you see me so obviously scare them was before i never even realized that that was based on the name alliance it yeah. just clicked to me you know yeah yeah it's an alliance it why it never even dawned yeah, on me? Yeah, oh, yes. It's yeah. It's so obvious too. It, yeah, you're having a bland moment right now. You better yeah. stop this. <laughs> We're going to cut that out. <laughs> but yeah, no man, Alliance man, I would say, all right, we've got to form a team of, yeah, yeah. of like young gunners underneath the general. Mm -hmm. You see me? So right there, so now we start drafting all of the gunners, them where they come round, you know? Mm -hmm. So then comes Movado, Busy Signal, Bling Dog, um, and then no, they have the, the younger generation who will come after, right. you know. So um, Sasko was in the, the, the link too, mm -hmm. but he was more Red Square because right. of affiliation, right. you know, where he come from, right. you know. So, you know, it was it was a whole movement, man. And from this on now, as we say, we start par and every show. If you, if you book one, you get all as long as I we're free. Say. Because I oh, saw a road. Man, you know those what I mean? were the days. You anyway, know? sometime all five, six place a night time. And they show them nice, and you they know? And show them nice. And I hit it's like after, a hit com after. Oh. And, uh, we did just have a, a, a vibe when we were mm. at work and an mm. energy, you know? So you don't know, eventually now, the bird, them have a fly away, left the nest. Right. You know? Right. Killer now change, you know? Killer is always going to be killer in our light, you know? Right. So the bigger... The youth them get now is more, is the more, them I say, yo, Jano, you know, you know, killer deal with man like at them time there and Ray, 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 and you know. So it's like the more we get older now, the more we get bigger, the more we get popular. Some, some man now really take the talk like mm -hmm. one time and not willing to do what was being done right. in the system. Right, got you. Killer the general, same way, you know, but yeah. a man now have four picnic. A man have this or that. He must have built him thing now over theme side. Got you. Right? And yeah. then probably be you now theme 
entity to break new artists and do what Killer did for us. That's right. Which is a great thing. Right. And right. That's, that's evolution. It's growth. Yeah, it's yeah, growth. Yeah. It's, it's growth. It's, 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 it's every worker dream to grow up the company, mm -hmm. expand, have a company for themselves that's one right. day. And, you know, that's what happened. Yeah. We started growing apart, but mm. still we have allegiance to the general. Right. Which was, it was a great thing to see everybody branch off and become them own giant mm. and them own two feet, mm -hmm. you know? So I had to find myself doing all of this as a man, building a young family. And then comes now the proper time in my career where I want to bust now a foreign. Mm. Then comes Marshall, nice, nice with Marshall, Miss Parlett, big son, find himself lock up in America. Wait, what? Lock up in America. Yeah. So, picture this now. Me and my brethren, them are rolling in a Jamaica, whatever, whatever. A man leave a piece of weed in a one of the bag them. Right? In a one of the, not just in a the bag, because we check all bag. There's a little inside zipper. You know, the little mm -hmm. safety zipper them. Yep. In a the Nike bag them. So it look wow. proper talk way. At the world, me travel with the little piece of weed. The world, me got Japan, me got Germany, me got Africa, everywhere. I never realized that this thing in my bag. Mm -mm. So till one time now, me I got to a TSA and the man go so, and do an extra search. I said, bro, you, you ever feel like the world cave in for you? Literally, the ground opened up one time. And I did it in the moment and I said, no sir, there must be some you know, way we can work this out. He said, bro, I, I literally would love to help you, but I cannot help you. Call the police. Boom. This smallest little misdemeanor foolishness, you know, but guess what? Misdemeanor, follow you. For decades. Mm -hmm. By your record. Oh, God. So it not only marred my ability to travel and to do what I needed to do to take my career to the next level, but it just became this thing that always was there you know like yes. it, 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 even one of the time may i get the case done and everything's supposed to work out right and then them i'm going back and forth to america and then this um officer just decides that mm -hmm. she's just going to use her powers to block me from coming into america even though i've been going back and forth nice and smooth everything clear court documents it's a misdemeanor it's simple yeah yeah she blocked me and did me wicked i don't know if i don't know what it was because you know we can reason. Yeah, of it's course. not like I'm irrational or fool, right. fool or dumb. Yeah. We can talk. So, lady, if you really want to talk, I will get to make the we level make we it. level and the reason or whatever. Bro, she never did that. Have no talk. Send me back as a like you call it deportee. You know the same something where you have to. All right, you know what saved me when we reach back on the plane. You know. The girl who come for me and I said, Jesus, peace, we Marshall. I'm a favorite artist. I oh, Oh, you come back. She goes and tuck the paper and walk with me like a me and her apart. Mm. She not dealing with me oh, like. Oh, gosh. I may mean, say, yo, me shame, me shame like that. I may mean, say, yo, you know me already. My thing is very clear cut, very mm -hmm. above ground. Me not in a no illegal, nothing. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I was just like, but then I realized there was a lesson. Mm. You know, when, you, when you're feeling these great highs, I always know that life compensates and it balances itself. So when the pendulum swing high, it will swing back low. So you always have to anticipate these snags, these um, hurdles. A word, Wayne. In the, the road. You, you have word. to do it. A word. And everybody, every, every superstar, every successful person will tell you that it don't come with its fair share of downs with the ups failures with the success so them time they just start realizing okay you know what there's a bigger thing at play here there's a and and the 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 the, the trip that i was making when they found the weed was to visit regina because Gia was a baby uh, red no not not, not Gia, yet. Never come yet. Ah. so Gia was just about ready to 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 pop and i was just checking up and whatever whatever and that just was just so at that point now you know there is nowhere that you want to be but there but because there, I no longer can be there for the birth of yes, Gio. Yes. So that moment That's is a, robbed because of a little 
foo foo spliff. So I started feeling sorry for myself and feeling bad about everybody who was involved in the situation, who left the weed and who were point fingers. Not point fingers in a sense where Carl and cuss nobody, no, but just. But it's hard to yourself. reckon with it, right? Yeah, it's hard to reckon. Because the, the, the consequences were so far reaching. That's right. Every time I get over it in the physical, I like fully, ray, 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 something else is presented to me where it's just like, can't be this again. Come back to this. Yeah, yeah. Can't be this again. I'm going to stay some mess. All right, I'll work through this. Never make it public in the media. I just dealt with it. Me and my inner circle and whatever, whatever. And um, it was at that point now where you know, Gio is born, biggest deal, you know. And then I have to start pick up myself now and start, you know, working again, going hard, you know, doing what I need to do to evolve as a musician. Mm -hmm. um, I would meet Damien Marley shortly after. And that was a whole um, other chapter of my life. Yeah. Damien and Steve inspire me now to understand that, okay, even though these guys were uh, inherited so much from their father's legacy, they were still the hardest workers. Now, their work ever ethic is next come level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was like yeah, yeah, a yeah, huge yeah. lesson to learn because at that point, I was just like, you know what? I'm done talented and really, really. Anytime I want a big tune, I can just find a big tune. Then you show me, say, no, 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 no. No days off. Mm -hmm. If music is the mission, we are going about the mission. Same way. No care what. No care what they in the bank account. No care what they put on. I mean, I said, blow, then if them money I go so hard, then I have to pick up myself and go hard too. And then he did say, when we go hard, we go hard simple, and done. Simple, <laughs> simple. <laughs> <laughs> we go hard and done. At this point now, me and Cartel are estranged. Uh -huh. We are not bridging anymore because me hold it with killer. Right. Cartel branch out. And it wasn't... Uh, uh, um, as I would put the amicable separation, it was like what a true, very, very, at what a fling, man had said this, man had said that, very contentious. And I was just like, blow oh, this serious from brothers to like, you see me? Literally and I had enemies. to literally just pick a side, you know? So you don't know, a killer make we know, make, make we who we are. Right. And killer was always just the general, teach me so much. You know what I mean? As I say, it basically was responsible for my career on so many different levels. Right. You know? So me and Killer right through. And then at, um, when we do Go Hard now, it was a time where Cartel it was like, I think 2010 or 2011, right before Cartel, they get locked up. And he reached out to me and said, Man, she would not have nothing, you know? Mm. And I said, Dog, you know my thing already. We are brothers. So from I said brothers, then are brothers I for eat. life. Yeah. I eat. And he must say, Yo, Marsha, tell me where you are, where you want with you, where you want with you. Make to get some things going. Because remember when Cartel just started, you know, and me and him, you know. Listen. We have got through the whole, we yes. had the collabs and Cartel. I said, Marsha, the hook, them are just that. Mm -hmm. And there's some problem, you know. So, yo, sing this some is chorus. This the new millennium, a different thing are going on. All right. Marshall and Cartel, I can create a All star. right. So, Dan Carleone, <laughs> that was a whole chapter oh, in, a, in a our growth and evolution. That studio and the rehearsals that used to happen in Mona yeah. is like a vivid memory for me. Oh, when you me. had the band, yeah. yo, your bands yeah. was the best band. Do you remember? Cool, no, man. Jeez. Oh, uh, my bands already put together and I did already know that it wouldn't last for very long. Because too much great people did too much, that. Too much great people, too much people who had different missions. Yes. But I was like, yo, we're all on the front line of the young movement yes. of music. Make we come together and jam and make some music. If we can knock some show together, make we do it. If I, if memory serves me, that was left side. Left side. Serrani. Serrani. Shia. Shia. Esco. Esco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, Alana, keep where them was like, you backup know, used singers. to do like backup Yes, and, man. No, so, I remember that, man. Be your top shatter. Yeah, man. Be your top shatter. Mm, we come mm. make them name in a music, you know, in a solid way. And um, that was a very exciting time because I was just, I was learning the music. So I needed musicians around me to yes. guide me, you know, and those were guys who did have instruments and I need yes. them fingers. So it was the perfect. Literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the perfect um, storm for mm, me at mm, that time. And a storm you did create. Yeah. Because as you mentioned, when you were mentioning Cartel a while ago, is hit. After hit, yeah. After hit, yeah, man. After hit. even Sans Cartel, yeah. Cause we are talking about overcome, yeah. Yo, yeah. Marshall in Hat, town, in the club, 
Um, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yo. Icebreaker. Make them come. So many. The, 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 the list goes this on and is on. The, now we call You know what me was the weed. Yo. When it come to... She to, want marry. Marijuana, man. Listen, <laughs> man. So, Catalog. Oh, gosh, man. Oh, gosh, man. Oh, yeah. I forgot them. The whole of them, they like... The, the, the list goes on and on. We were on having fun on. with it. But Wayne, I don't... I don't even know if you did really realize, you know, but the anthem, so in that period of time, the soundtrack to our lives is you, you know, mm. because Killer had a hit, but it was Wayne on the hit. Mm. Cartel had a hit, but it was Wayne on the hit with Cartel. Yeah, like, it was yeah, just yeah. like, yeah, 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 no, yeah. man, you did find it, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a time when I was just like, yo, I could be like Neo in the Matrix. <laughs> 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 because a lot of times I found myself as the... The, I don't know if people say it to this day. They yeah. say, Marsha, I'm going, you can connect certain dots. Yes. You know, because I just the link where we did have with everybody yeah. in the network. It's because you're you know clean I mean? and you're a good person, man. All right. Yes, man. You say it. I better you say it more than me. No, man, you can. You can uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you see, this is a, it's a, I have a little thing where I always do, like when, <laughs> like, you know, you want to kind of give yourself a little, you know, shoulder yeah, brush, I kind of yeah. go, well, let me just toot my own horn. Toot, 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 toot. <laughs> toot it, man. Go. I say it, go sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when is the truth, is the truth, you know. Right. That is it. And my biggest thing is when your peers sit amongst you and yeah. your peers say, no, man, yeah. good people. Right. You know, say, yeah. Because right. yeah. they have no reason to lift you up like that because them first would be like no man a simple you that uh, exactly. da, 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 you know exactly. not going to look at you as an elder or exactly but no man you proper proper heart clean long time well but, i have to say this i have to say this one of the, the the original um examples for me of putting the work and miraculous things can happen, magical moments can be created was definitely ricardo gardner right really yeah man because remember, Bibi was in my same year at Wilma's. And not just same year, because you can be in the same year and uh, over there over the south and mm -hmm. him over the south. Like me and him, Pari, mm -hmm. throughout school. I had, I had the biggest vision for him in my mind. Even when it was people would doubt him because in body structure, whatever it was. Right. This is when he was like 15, 16 yeah. and really just go, getting into his talent. So... I saw this youth now as a as my brethren at school represent Jamaica at the highest level. Mm. Now, not just represent Jamaica, but also go on to be drafted into the biggest the Premier in my League. Yeah. Estimate, estimation, football the league. biggest football league yeah. in the world. And not just be drafted into the biggest, but have a career that spanned 10 years. Mm -hmm. And Bibi was always the man who was the master of his destiny in a sense because even when when he was at Bolton Bolton was in the second division they never That's reached right. No, yes. you know say so Bibi did score on the playoff game as if to say me no business who want play full full today but me I go make sure say mm -hmm. my story is written in the BPL so you see when me did see that happening mm. that was the first thing that made me know say oh we can be star no we don't right. have to wait I'm putting an internship and we, we can put our mind to it and be that star now if we put in with 10,000 hours A word, early. Win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did see A that. Word. And And that would, did always just be, become this beacon of like, it was a barometer for me to say, yo, okay, okay, we can do this. We can do this. And not, we would mm. have to wait 10, 15 years to make a life for ourselves and make a career. Bibi was always that example. I'm going to give thanks to him, man. Our... Yeah, man. No, but I can remember days at being at Walmart, and yeah, more time I think like big man as a little youth, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm here thinking if ever Bibi find himself in a, any kind of struggle where he find it hard for come at school or I was like, yo, I have to find a way for pitch it to my parents say, yo, it is worth making him come to stay with us. Big man think me, I say, yo, no, I say, yo, in my mind, I say, any day, name day. Bibi have no problem in Africans, in Africa stay with we. Because me didn't know, say, there's more, there's much more to this talent here. And it, 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 never just telling the same heart clean long time. Yeah, man. Oh, gosh, clean man. Clean long time. Oh, gosh, man. Long time. Oh, gosh, man. You mentioned briefly a while ago about the birth of Gio. Yeah. How, how did fatherhood shape you and change you? 
Ah, uh, fatherhood really turned me from a boy to a man. Mm -hmm. I was just living, but then I had to start living for my son. Yes. You know, I had to start being a lot more responsible with, with what I did and how I spent my time. And even how I was visualizing myself in the long run, mm -hmm. I became a lot more responsible with the content that I would create, with the music that I would make, because, you know, I would always want to be able to um, stand up behind any music that I do. That's I always right. wanted to do that before, but for some reason, when, I, when Gio came, I was just like, you know what? Different way in this now, you know? Yeah. Different way in this. And, and you know, so said, I just started to really step different, be more mature, be more um, thoughtful about my decision making. It wasn't just living for the moment or right. in the moment. I had to be a little more calculated now with, with my moves and mm -hmm. stuff. And, um, you know, eventually I would meet Tammy after, um, after that and then... Tammy then now became, uh, when Regina was away, Tammy would, would kind of step in and, you know, we were kind of parent together. I would realize how good and how compatible we were together as parents, as parents. even before we started having children. Which is so interesting because some people would think that that would be almost the thing that would cause an issue, right? Yeah. But in you guys, it was actually, oh, wait a minute, no, but you know, say, she could be the mother of my children still, definitely, like this. Definitely. No, man, yeah. for, for me, that was one of the, the greatest opportunities to experience how she would be as a mother and yes. how, how um, similar we were as parents, mm -hmm. parents and styles. And because that can cause... Contention. Um, yeah, well. contention yeah. in a home when, when you are you have one perspective and the other parent has the other and we realize that we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. it, it, those things for me just definitely firm up and kind of tick boxes yes. that need to be ticked before yeah. you, you really dive into a relationship long yeah. term with somebody, you know? Yeah. So, um, and of course, Regina was just such a beautiful soul and her being such a beautiful soul allowed us to co-parent Geo in such a smooth way and healthy way in such a healthy mm, way mm. where it just benefited him it benefited yeah. him benefited us yeah because nobody benefits from the drama and the trauma and the, that's right and and the, the toxic the toxicness yeah. you know yeah so that has always been something that my peers have always said yo love all you um, and Regina and Tammy rated you know live together and yeah. you know I, I really just have to put that to the personalities involved and us putting Gio first. Yes. You know, yes. we don't put our emotions or our feelings first. We just realize that this is our situation. So let us make it the best situation that it can be. That's right. You know? That's right. So that, that, that's basically that, you know, and, and here we are now. Gio is 16 years old. Crazy. 16 years old, putting out his first single. Crazy. Super talented. Yes. It is almost scary how quick his talent is growing. Yeah. And I see myself in him and I see Absolutely. more for him. As long as he applies himself, mm. he has a lot more where wow. um, raw talent is concerned. Wow. Oh, I'm not even close to Gio. Really? I'm not even close to Gio. But that doesn't mean that he will surpass me in music. Right. Because he will have to have the application. He will have the to consistency, the consistency, the discipline. The, the discipline. The, yes. the love. Yeah. The love is one of the biggest parts. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't look on it like, oh, I'm going to write another song. It have to be like, yo, I like the day you're done. You know? <laughs> it's like how you see cartel yeah, yeah, yeah. deal with music. Output, output, yeah. right. Whether up, whether down, we just a right. That's one consistent thing. From a music we say, we just a right and mm -hmm. be consistent. From him, I mean, the aim is that he's a million times more successful. That That's of my course. dream for him. Absolutely. And that's my vision for him. But of course, he might have to, does, come down to him. He might have to have the vision for himself. Mm -hmm. He might mm -hmm. have to plant the seed for himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that I think um, you have demonstrated so beautifully is how to healthily interact with boy children. Mm. And it's something that Tammy and I touched on a little bit when we chatted. Um, and I absolutely love 
how much you love on your boys. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is so refreshing. Yeah. And I think for our society, it is such a healthy example. Yeah, Let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk a little bit about the way you interact with them. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, I don't know, maybe where that come from. Is it how you were raised? Or is it that you, something that you feel like is lacking in our space? What's, what's that for you? That was definitely very instinctive. Yeah. Um, I, my father wasn't necessarily the touchy feely, hug up, I love you, kiss pan cheek, you know, like he, he, he wasn't that type of a father. And I guess that is attributed to the Jamaica, the typical Jamaica that he was from. Yeah. It, fathers never really interact with them. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know there are fathers who have that type of a touchy feely relationship with them boys but it's not typical in our society it's not typical yeah. it's not typical and and for me as i say it's not something that i do to kind of change a narrative it's something that just resonates with me mm. like i feel like i need to be that father to my children it's my boys mm. it's my boys and they need love and they need attention and maybe somewhere in there is i would have wanted that type of a relationship with my father mm. I never, I, I never got it. Yeah. And don't get it, don't get it twisted. I never for a day thought that my father didn't love me, even right. though he probably said, "I love you," maybe once if ever. Right. It just not that he just he he showed love instead of saying love. Right. You know, but in in my um. In my technique of fathering or parenting, I just feel like showing it, saying it, it's just a full on. You know what I mean? Throw everything on the kitchen sink at, at the kids them, mm -hmm. just so that they know that they have a safe place in me and Tammy at all times. That part. At all times. And, and if, it's, if they want to cry, they can cry because them see daddy cry. The first time I saw my father cry was when he lost his mom. Mm. And some of said they cut deep, mm. you know? Um, but I mean, don't, I mean, it's, it's neither here nor there if you kids see you cry or not. But I just want them to, I just want to be vulnerable in front of them to let them know that there is that exhaust pipe where yes. if you have that emotion and you want to let it off, let it off. And if you want to let it off in front of me, no problem. Mm -hmm. If you want to come to me about this, come to me about that. Like I'm almost like a big brother to them in a sense because mm -hmm. I'm so, I'm that lit daddy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> not lit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, speaking of that, <laughs> speaking of that, there's a dynamic also in the household with my younger brother. That's right, with Alex. He's so much younger than me that it, it's weird because I'm so much older than him. <laughs> I'm almost like a guardian to him. Yes. I'm not really his brother. I'm kind of like his dad right now right. because his dad passed. You know what I mean? So, um, I yes, it's my brother, but I have to be so much more than just a brother to mm -hmm. him because there's that void, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it's not always easy yeah. because he's a, he's growing older now. Right. He's growing older. And the truth is he is my brother. Right. And you, you are not his authority figure, technically. I, technically, I'm not his oh, authority right. figure, but I well, have taken on the mantle. Line. Yeah. And I did that from early. Mm. From he was like eight, he moved in with me. Right. We live, um, he lived with me um, for maybe about three, four years. And then he moved back. He moved, not back, but he moved in with daddy after that. And then daddy passed. And then he's back with me. So there was a time when he was with daddy and then kind of moved out of our type of guardianship mm -hmm. for a lack of, you know. But he's back with me now. So yeah. I have to be like that father figure for him, mm. you know, in the house. So it's kind of, you know. But, but now the relationship is... Is becoming a lot cooler because yeah. he's becoming a, a, a man now, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it was always a promise to him, not maybe not a verbal promise, but I always thought that when he reaches a certain age, we will change the dynamic of the yeah. relationship. Yeah. And you will get a different respect from me. Yeah. And we will roll different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's not Uncle Wayne again. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's Wayne. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, the loss of your dad, how did that impact you? That hit me hard. That hit me hard because um, daddy was always there for me. You know, daddy was like, he was a coffee farmer. Um, would always come out for the farm and come check we. And he was very much present. It wasn't uh, every two weeks, I see daddy. I used to see daddy almost every day. Mm -hmm. Him and Tammy have 
this wonderful relationship too. He was a very pragmatic man and he was the voice of reason a lot mm -hmm. of times. So I had to, when he passed, I had to kind of, uh, like, what do you do, like culminate him into a, like a figure in my mind where I knew him so well that I could kind of almost know what he would say yes. in certain scenarios. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and just use him in that way, you know. But it was a big blow. It was a big blow. Yeah. It was something that time alone could heal that, yeah. you know. And it was very sudden too, in a sense. You know, but yes, he had his heart problems, he had his pacemaker, but he's always like, I never get to say bye. We never get to say, yo, daddy, so I'm to this and that. How you want to deal with Ray Ray? You know, like that wasn't a conversation that was hard. So it was very much like, oh my God, like daddy is gone. Mm. That constant figure is now gone. It was just, it was, it was a hard thing to deal with. And it's still, you know, a wound that is there, but just mm -hmm. as time goes by, it, 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 you heal, you know? And it just inspires me to kind of be the man that he wanted me to be. So, like, I'm diving into all of these things that he would have never thought that I would have not done. Not D.I. Wayne. Yeah, D.I. Wayne. Not Wayne. Chef It Wayne. Not Chef It Wayne, no. Like, those are, <laughs> like, he must be, like, having the biggest smile wherever he is right now, <laughs> knowing that I'm diving into all of these, you know, domestic aspects of myself and just searching, just seeking deeper and just, you know, mm. f finding these hidden talents and, and stuff. What's your best porridge? Peanut porridge. Oh, loud. My bad pan cashew porridge too, but peanut porridge are the I eat at me. What yeah, is your answer? best soup? You know, so I'm not really too go soup. You did the soup one time though? No, I'm not really go soup. I'm not go soup. I'm not go soup. I got curry, um, steamed fish, ackee and salt fish, all kind of thing. I don't really go soup. All right, put it this way. The soup I used to go is probably <laughs> more more did I supervise the soup. Because <laughs> I'm dead and I oversee soup, you know. I oversee the soup, you know. Red peas and all these things. I have to know if I scald the something and the something and the thing. And yeah, I'm boil on the peas and do the thing and re-re and get the dashing and the yam and the something. Yeah. So I'm, a I'm actually the fastest rising chef Stop in Jamaica. This. You better stop. I actually heard that you straight up, <laughs> like, you want to chat. Well, you, I, I can't even say it on my own show, but I'm going to take my time. Basically, you said ding dong can't cook. You say him food salt. Me never say him can't cook. I him. heard you with my own ears. Me never say him can't cook. You also say you want the face food that you're I saying. You want was a salt. <laughs> but I didn't say you can't cook. You want Every a, bad chef a grilled a bad butter dinner. with your saying. No, me is the baddest griller. Me can tell Same. a man, me a gorilla griller. Oh. Yendi, <laughs> if my grill for you right now, you lick your 12 finger. I mean, let me count. I have 11 fingers, All right. not 12. <laughs> okay. okay. No, really, so you, you know, know that, right? Where you have the little pinky? No, look. Look, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5 is a one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, me, man, but I me I tell you, sir, <laughs> grilling wise, <laughs> I didn't realize I was a grilling prodigy. Oh, not the prodigy. Oh, you better stop it's this. It's like anything my hand touch mm. turned to gold. Oh, oh, wow. I cook with soul. Oh. It's always a taste and a sight to behold. But I just believe me. And the, the food end, never I'm, yet run coal. Never yet run coal. But it does make it blaze on the coal. You see that now? You can't come in on my school, you know. You can be a student, a, a wordsmith student of mine. No? Yes, because I feel it down to my soul. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, as I say, I'm just a student of life. Mm. And I don't put no limitation upon myself Same because way. I realized that stuff that I thought that I couldn't do, it was just about starting the process. You know what I really like and admire truly about you is I feel like when the world stood still the other day mm -hmm. and when things felt a bit chaotic and crazy and uncertain i feel like you unleashed a whole new side to yourself mm -hmm. that was such an example for so many of us looking on yeah um it was literally like no i've always put myself in this box but watch me step outside of it and be comfortable stepping outside of it. It was very refreshing to yeah, watch. It yeah. really has been refreshing to watch. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it has been 
a lot of vul vulnerable moments yeah. that I was totally as afraid of. Yeah. You know, before I was ever vulnerable, you still kind of hold certain things close to your chest because yeah. I say people know them thing that they're gonna use against them, they're gonna laugh, they're gonna all kind of thing. Yeah. Nobody cares, bro. Yeah. People are going through their own stress. It it mo it makes you a lot more relatable when they understand that, oh, you go through your ish too. Mm -hmm. You have your issues too. You you don't have a perfect life even though you're a celebrity long time and all these right. things. People resonate with that because that's the reality of life. Right. Regardless of where you are on the echelon, you know, life is life and like, you know, Tammy is definitely my inspiration for and my like example for being vulnerable mm. and it working. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she do things and I'm like, oh my God, like, <laughs> are you really opening? And then I realize the comment section is flooded with people who are just like, whoa, I can't believe it. And yo, I'm resonating with this and this and that. And, and in my day, when I was like, whoa, not one negative comment out of a thousand comments. So it made me realize quickly that people. It's almost like your imperfections make you perfect to people. Word. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Once they see yeah. that, that is when you're the perfect person because... Because you become oh, human. No, you become human. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I totally am enjoying opening myself and vlogging on almost... A, everyday basis mm. and we have those days when we don't vlog at all yes. but we have like a rhythm and a system yeah so before we have we vlog on a monday wednesday and a friday we 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 we, we before we post on a monday wednesday and a friday we vlog the day before that and then we edit and get it out for the next day um it has been such a exciting journey the community that we've we've um it's such a we've solid garnered. community yeah it's it's the cousins the cousins are everything. Oh. It's they're everything mm. because it's yeah. not just um, YouTubers or people who comment. It's so much more than that. Like yeah. there's so much. There are so many deep relationships that we've yes. had, physical and otherwise. Yeah. Um, there's so much advice that we get. There is so much banter that happens in the comment section. People learn things. People know things. As we learn, we grow. And the community is such a wholesome one. Is just it's an awesome thing to 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 witness and mm -hmm. be a part of. You know, I give thanks. I give thanks every day. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's um it's such a beautiful, relatable example of healthy family life. It really is, and Thank I think you. it has a solid place here. And I know, I know you guys. I know when you started, because as you know, Tammy and I talk about these things. I know yeah. when you started, it wasn't to be that. It was yeah, yeah. just to be. Just to be, yeah. just to be, it, but it, that, that's the beauty of it, and I think that's, that's the, the beauty, beauty of, of a lot of ideas that blossom yes. and a lot of talents that grow. It's just born out of the appreciation and the love of yeah. the talent. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Tammy just wanted to do this, just wanted to try this, and then it kind of mushroomed and blossomed into something big. It's literally work, like we literally own a channel. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. We have to deal with like partnerships and promo and. You know what I mean? Saying the right things, doing the right things, you know, you know, um, sharing the right things, you know, but always, always, always staying real mm. to who we are. That's right. And and just presenting life as it presents to us. Ooh. That's 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 the magic of it. And that's what we'll always stay true to. There's so many things that we step away from because it doesn't resonate with us and we don't want to jeopardize the relationship and the trust that our community yes. that we that we have yeah. with them, you know? Yeah. So much that we step away from. Mm. And I, almost every day, we have to see, see through things and it's like, you know what? No, 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 no. This don't really, yeah, this don't really resonate. This don't really resonate with us, you know? And that's because we value the the, the connection and the, 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 you know? And the authentic representation. Yeah. Yeah, man. We value it, man. Yeah. If I were to ask you to give me your top three life hacks, right? Mm -hmm. The, the top three pieces of advice that you would give to people, what would they be? Now for your Sagicore life hacks. I would have to say consistency is the key to penetrating whatever barrier or obstacle is in your way. You know, like them always, I always think of the, the drip of water if that 
even a drip of water, if it keeps on knocking, the biggest, toughest concrete liquid after a couple of years. That's right. You know what I mean? Um, another thing that I've learned along the way, and I'm still trying to practice it for myself, is that your mind is like it as a fertile soil. <laughs> it's oh, fertile word. soil. So whatever you put in it, whatever you plant in it, you're going to reap. <laughs> so resonate with big ideas, resonate with, with, with positivity, mm. you know, mm -hmm. resonate with wisdom. And, and that is what we'll, we'll, we'll forward back to you. Mm. Um, nothing like family. Yes. Nothing like family. Um, and don't get it wrong. When I say that, there have been friendships that, 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 that I have... Um, harnessed over the years and had over the years that rival family mm -hmm. but there is nothing like your immediate family immediate surroundings you know spend time with them invest your most in your your, your, your circle a word <laughs> a whole word yeah. so i want us to play a game it's very hard it was really hard to choose what game to play with you because yeah. but check said that joke city that don't come with enough is that what you want to do? Yeah, yeah, I've had that joke though. Well, then let's do it. Is this where we do? We actually, I'm going to come up with like a corny joke intro right here where it's like. From your corny, I'm buying it. You can use some lovely foolishness. This is the MasterCard Priceless Moment. Okay, go ahead, Wayne. You have 30 seconds of stand-up comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage is Wayne Mitchell of Meet the Mitchells. You know, I meet them called Father Abraham, right? Who have many sons, so obviously, me as a dad joker, right? So right. watch this now. Yeah. I'm just going to put it back to you. What do you call a cow in an earthquake? A mover? Cow in an earthquake? A milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like I said it back to you again. I made that joke. No, I'm coming that in. Joke was come good. in. Why, why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was scariest. Yeah, I forgot to give up this thing right now. Why did the scarecrow win an award? I don't know, Wayne. Why did because he? Because he was outstanding in his field. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is actually Tommy's good. Like, Tommy's like, Wayne, please come out for the people of YouTube. <laughs> again, again, again. One Listen, more. One more? Yeah. <laughs> that was good. I can't like. Right, what do you call a Mexican who can't find his car? I don't know, Wayne. What do you call it? Carlos. <laughs> I don't know if that was politically correct. What do you call two Mexicans playing basketball? I don't know, Wayne. What do you call them? Juan and Juan. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Not the thigh slap. Woo. He did the... <laughs> 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 Yo, do, you have a, day, do you have another? Just calm down, no man. Just calm down, no man. Me, me go all day, man. Just leave it at that, no man. Because right now, Tammy, I cringe. Anywhere she is, Tammy's cringing right now. Actually, yes, this is exactly where she goes, win. <laughs> Stop it, no. Stop it, no Stop win, it, no win. <laughs> yeah. Wayne, thank you so much. Yeah, man, thank you thanks. so much. It's refreshing. Yeah. It is exciting, and I'm really just so happy for you guys. I'm actually really excited to see where Meet the Mitchells goes. You know, yeah. so you and Tommy, I'm a people them yeah. long yeah, time. But I'm, I'm really excited to see where this season goes for you guys. So I may or may not have a little surprise for you. You think I should have a surprise for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You, you feel like you earned it? <laughs> well. Actually... <laughs> I do have, boom. What you saying to a me? A lovely gift from Appleton. What you saying to because me? Because a little birdie told me 
that you might like to have a little sip sip oh yes you know a no, little here we, and there no i will put this to very very good use <laughs> in the very near future too yeah i think i'm going straight home for going to do this right now <laughs> no thank you uh, thank you you absolutely. come bearing gifts i mean I like you the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> yeah, i like you i like you thanks Andy. Okay. thank you thank you wayne yeah, i man. really appreciate you thank yeah, you man, just thanks Odyssey with Yendi Untold Journeys was brought to you in partnership with Sagicor and Mastercard. Grab yourself some Appleton and tap into a new world of flavor. Have a snack for this episode? Well, grab your Sun Mix and taste the good life.